In the aftermath of the Battle of Salamis, the Persian forces still posed a threat to Greek independence. One year later, in 479 BCE, the Persians, commanded by Mardonius, launched another invasion of Attica, northern Greece. Their aim was to reclaim Athens and crush the Greek resistance. As the Persian army marched through central Greece, Athens sent out a plea for help. Sparta and several other Greek city-states heeded the call, ready to stand against the Persian onslaught. The stage was set for the Battle of Plataea, near the city of Plataea in Boeotia. The Persian force, numbering around 50,000 men, including troops from northern and central Greece, faced off against the Greek army led by King Pausanias of Sparta. The Greek force, though outnumbered, consisted of 10,000 Spartans and 8,000 Athenians among their ranks. The Persians held the advantage in total numbers, as well as the superior cavalry and archer corps. But the Greeks, armed with their trusty hoplites, heavily armored infantry, were confident in their ability to withstand the Persian assault. For several days, the two sides faced each other, both wary of launching an attack. The Greeks hoped for a decisive confrontation, but the Persians hesitated, finding it difficult to utilize their cavalry and archers effectively against the well-protected Greek hoplites. As the days wore on, the Greeks began to face shortages of supplies. Pausanias, the Spartan king, devised a plan to provoke Mardonius into battle by gradually withdrawing closer to Plataea. Under the cover of darkness, the Greeks began their strategic retreat, intending to lure the Persians into a vulnerable position. However, the execution didn't go as planned, and by dawn, only a portion of the Greek forces had managed to withdraw. The Persians, observing the smaller Greek contingent, sensed an opportunity. As the sun rose, the Persians saw the Athenian and Spartan forces on the move. The stage was set for a showdown that would shape the fate of Greece. As the Persian and Greek forces clashed at Plataea, the outcome hung in the balance. Mardonius, sensing the disorder among the Greeks, seized the opportunity and launched a fierce attack, hoping his archers would prevail against the remaining hoplites. For a time, the outcome remained uncertain. However, the Persian attackers got dangerously close to the Greek lines, allowing the hoplites to mount a devastating countercharge. Greek reinforcements arrived, but the Persian and allied cavalry posed a challenge for the Greeks. In the heat of battle, the Greek hoplites, equipped with bronze spears and metal armor, proved too formidable for the archers. The Persians, lacking sufficient protection with only wicker armor and leather helmets, were overwhelmed by the disciplined Greek forces. The battle raged on, but the Persian archers found themselves defenseless in close quarters combat. The Greeks dealt a heavy blow to the Persians, with estimates suggesting that the Greeks lost around 1,360 men, while the Persian losses numbered more than 10,000, including 1,000 Greeks who had allied with the Persians. In the midst of the chaos, Mardonius and his personal guard fell in the retreat, while the remaining Persian army, about 40,000 strong, dispersed in every direction. The once mighty Persian field army had been effectively destroyed. Simultaneously, on the slopes of Mount Mikali, the Battle of Mikali unfolded. Greek forces led by King Leotychidas of Sparta faced the Persians, who had withdrawn their ships on the Mikali Peninsula across from the island of Samos. Unbeknownst to the Persians, some Semyon envoys had sought help from King Leotychidas. They informed him that the Persian fleet had been weakened, with their powerful Phoenician contingent detached and vulnerable to attack. Responding to the call, Leotychidas sailed with his Greek fleet to Samos, where the Persians had beached their ships on the Mikali Peninsula. The Persians had fortified their positions, including a wooden stockade, and were backed by General Tigranes and 6,000 Persian troops. Undeterred by the Persian defensive works, the Greeks launched an assault. The battle on the slopes of Mount Mikali was fierce, but the combined Greek forces overwhelmed the Persians and their Ionian Greek allies. Recognizing the challenging fortifications and the limited size of his force, King Leotychidas devised a daring plan to lure Tigranes and the Persians into attacking. He strategically detached a group of Athenians and other Greek forces, while he led the majority of his men on a covert overland march to flank the Persians. The plan unfolded flawlessly. The Athenians boldly launched a frontal assault along the beach, capturing the attention of the Persians. Sensing an opportunity, Tigranes, the Persian general, ordered an attack from their defenses. However, to his surprise, some of the Ionian Greeks who had fought alongside the Persians switched sides, further tilting the balance. The outcome of the battle teetered on a knife's edge, but just in the nick of time, Leotychidas and the Spartan forces arrived. With their arrival, the tide turned decisively against the Persians. Fierce fighting ensued, resulting in heavy losses on both sides. Ultimately, the Persians suffered a devastating defeat. Approximately 4,000 Persian soldiers, including Tigranes and his second-in-command, lost their lives. While the Greek losses were also significant, the Greeks emerged victorious. With the Persian forces routed, the Greeks seized what spoils they could and set fire to the Persian ships in the stockade. 
They then sailed back to Samos, having secured a significant victory that effectively marked the end of the Greco-Persian Wars. The repercussions of these battles were momentous. The Greeks, now free from the Persian threat, were able to continue their flourishing civilization. Their control of the sea not only ensured their safety but also allowed them to export their ideas and goods throughout the Mediterranean world. Greece entered a new era, known as its Golden Age, where art, philosophy, democracy, and innovation thrived. The legacy of the battles of Plataea and Mycale would forever be remembered as a testament to the Greek spirit and their unwavering determination to defend their independence and preserve their cultural heritage. And so, the Greco-Persian Wars came to a close, but the spirit of the Greeks lived on, leaving an indelible mark on history.